<clears throat> we are celebrating Ayurveda Day. Today is 10th November and we are celebrating with University of Latvia under guidance of Dr. Shantala Priya Darthani Ji. Thank you, Dr. Shantala Ji. Thank you very much. In this session, first scientific session, we have our renowned speakers, Dr. Ish Sharma, Dr. Somit Kumar, Dr. Suresh Swarnapuri, Tajana Trasvekka, Dr. Alris Buck, Dr. Venkatan Joshi. Everybody is expert of his fraternity, science, stream, and <coughs> ultimately Ayurveda or Ayush. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shantala Priyadarthani ji for coordinating for this webinar. Thank you very much. And now I would like to request Professor V.K. Agriyotri, sir, for brief welcome of the speakers. Yeah, thank you so much. And now the, the time has come that we uh, are here to um, uh, welcome all the guest speakers of today's first scientific session of this international uh, webinar, uh, of course, uh, organized by our IRES as well as our Latvia University uh, with the great uh, guidance of uh, Madam Pridarshini, Shantala Pridarshini ji. So we have got the galaxy of uh, our guest speakers in this session. And uh, very naturally, as Professor Pavan Sharma, you told, they are really an ocean of knowledge, especially for our system of medicine and Ayurveda as such. How they are developing, uh, or how they are seeing developed uh, uh, Ayurveda there in their countries. Uh, I welcome Professor Isharma sir from uh, Mauritius as well as all the rest of the speakers, those who are uh, going to give knowledge in abundance, especially because this is a high day where we, we are here to appreciate all the uh, values of Ayurvedic system of medicine given by our great rishis and also I our Lord Dhamdari. Happy Ayurveda 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 I am Professor Ish Sharma from Mauritius. Yes, please share. Sound was coming. Please share. Please don't stop share one. One share. Okay. Now I am sharing. Uh, please share. I have shared, sir. No, no. PowerPoint slideshow. Without slideshow, voice will not come. Down, down, madam, <laughs> slideshow. Yes. The theme for this year is Ayurveda for One Health with the tagline Ayurveda for Everyone on Every Day. Har din har kisi ke liye Ayurveda. Last year it was Har Ghar Ayurveda and now it has uh, like penetrated more where every human being, like every family member should be focused upon through Ayurveda and the focus on the other hand widened where human animal plant environment interface has been taken into consideration. When it comes to Ayurveda activities in Mauritius we noted there being a very high prevalence of non-communicable diseases in Mauritius as compared to the global average and Ayurveda says Prameho Anushangi Nam Non-communicable diseases might not uh, revert to normalcy. They, most of them can somehow be managed, can be treated, but might not be cured. That is where we planned to be proactive and preventive. And we focused the age group 6 to 12, which is the most habit-forming age group. And for this age group, that is primary schooling years, we developed Ayush wellness program. And we got it approved from the Ministry of uh, Education and the Mauritius National Cabinet in May 2022. It includes Ayurveda dietetics, some herbs, common yoga protocol and uh, 550 school teachers in health education and principals from 319 government primary schools who are trained on this module and they are very effectively delivering the program in schools as uh, confirmed upon uh, repeated visitations. The first Ayurvedic garden 
at a presidential or prime ministerial palace the official residence of the his excellency the president of the republic of mauritius was inaugurated by honorable prime minister mauritius on 11th of august this year it is spread over 4000 square meters and contains 60 herbs which we procured locally and now we are planning to go into an extension with 60 more herbs so this is not another medicinal or herbal garden this is uh, titled as ayurvedic garden which is a big boost to the term ayurveda on a global platform siddha and the yunani were not included in the original traditional medicine act in mauritius that is act 37 of 1989 last year these two were also included now Mauritius is the only country after India and Sri Lanka to complete the full spectrum of Ayush when it comes to recognition. So all the Ayush experts now have a much bigger role to play in Mauritius and uh, deliver the health options to the Mauritian public. Ayurveda has got a great role to play for environment also as uh, the theme this year included millets, uh, the environment also. Millets can be a befitting answer. This has been mentioned by Charak and Sushut, and these are called Kudhanya as these are a bit warmer and less nourishing than wheat and rice. And the problem with NCDs is overnourishment, calorie intense food. That is where these being a little lesser nourishing because they have more fibers, they have more complex fibers. These are the right response, the right remedy to most non-communicable diseases. And are these medicines? Yes, these can be medicines because Ayurveda believes Ahara Mahabhaishijam, the food is the biggest medicine. So, for environment what millets can do is they can fulfill sustainable development goals number 2, 3, 12 and 13. Two is zero hunger, millets take 50% time and cost less than uh, cost and time than wheat and rice, 50%. So we can grow more millets and uh, more people can uh, get food. SDG3 is health. As we were discussing, they have uh, high fibers and they are bacterial resistant. They do not require antibacterial treatments. They do not require fertilizers they are uh, they grow on their own they are cd grasses not requiring bacteria uh, antibacterial treatments we are safer in consuming them 12 is responsible consumption we should be consuming responsibly and our choices will make a difference millets contain one fourth water than uh, what we require to grow rice so if we just replace some of our rice with millets, we'll be saving precious fresh water on the planet Earth. Environment. They are C4 photosynthesis crops. By C4 we mean they contribute the maximum oxygen to the environment. If 8 billion people start consuming millets in some proportion, maybe like 10, 20, 30, 40% of their diet, and they reduce the consumption of rice and wheat environment will be a much safer place to live fresh water would be saved zero hunger can be achieved and a healthier human race can be ensured so with this i conclude my talk and namaste to all happy health jay ayurveda thank you thank you dr e. sharma ji and particularly Dr. E. Sharmaji is available with us, is present here. So if Dr. Shantala will permit me for two minutes, I would like to invite Dr. E. Sharma physically, virtually he has communicated the message and now physically he is with us. Dr. E. Sharma, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I am not in a position to speak much, but thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shantala, for this opportunity. And this is a family, so we keep meeting, we keep talking. But I really <clears throat> appreciate your 
mammoth effort to gather so much so many videos and then uh, like uh, arranging them and i i know how much we spoke that when are you going to send video please send it soon send it soon and i can see your hard work taking a proper shape heads off to you thank you very much on sir thank you sir thank you dr shantala ji our next speaker please we will welcome our next speaker of the day dr somit kumar whether dr somit i welcome dr ms tajana also when we are talking in the meantime please open this so time will not be spent for that sir are you able to hear and see no stop share again share पहले से खोल लिया कीजिए मैडम जब तक हम लोग बात करते हैं ना इन लोगों की व्यू चलती है सौमित योर स्क्रीन इज विजिबल Click on the video. Yes. You are able to hear, sir. Just wait. No. Not your screen is not visible. Black screen is coming. sir both are uh, uh, open mission research and services in way back 2012 we started the operation of avp baltics in collaboration of university of latvia for right. a integrative education program for people with medical and allied medical knowledge and we introduce this a a bridged introductory course of 120 hours of basic ayurveda education the curriculum was one of the first accredited course for people in mainstream medical and health care force for this course almost 120 medical as well allied medical uh, students have passed out and today we are in a cusp where we are also going to start a advanced course of ayurveda for almost 1000 hours as per who norms to train people in panchakarma therapy as well as dietetics with the presence of ayurveda chair dr shantala priyadarshini we are looking forward to broad based whole activity of ayurveda and its propagation in baltics region where we know the population is merely 60 lakhs but the potential is very high oh. there is immense interest in the No? people in the baltic region and one of the research has shown that almost 60% of the population has one in their lifetime who are interested in 
complementary medicine or have taken some form of uh, therapy in complementary medicine. So, looking forward towards this opportunity, we, in collaboration of AVP, Baltics, Ayush, and the government of India want to propagate the message of Ayurveda in whole Baltic region. On the front of research, we have taken major strides in collaboration of international cooperation under the scheme of Ayush government and we have very diligently designed a double blind placebo controlled crossover study on type 2 diabetes under the guidance of noted endocrinologist Dr. Valdis Pirax. He has been in the center of all the Ayurvedic activity in uh, Latvia as well as Baltics or rather the whole Europe to propagate genuine integrative Ayurveda healthcare. He is spearheading this Screen study gone. where we are going to study gone. one arm getting uh -oh. true Ayurveda along with standard of care and now the are other arm she getting should? placebo okay, Ayurveda okay. with a standard of care and in next nine months we will understand how whole system approach of Ayurveda which includes eight uh, formulations as well as diet and lifestyle will impact the glycemic response, inflammatory cytokines as well as quality of life in the patients in the research. This is one of the major achievement which the combined effort of Ayush government as well as AVP politics and Latvian University has achieved in scientifically taking Ayurveda inroads to Eastern Europe. As part of the services in AVP Baltics, we have given services to almost 12,000 unique patients in Baltics as well as the allied uh, European nations like Sweden, Slovenia, Slovakia and Turkey. So we all see a very bright future and a shared visual for Ayurveda on this occasion of World Ayurveda Day 2023. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Somit Kumar. Thank you very much. You have really highlighted the concepts of Ayurveda also and <coughs> trade also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we would like to welcome Dr. Suresh Chwanapuri, President, Europe Ayurveda Academy from London, UK. Welcome, screen, black screen is coming. Sir, is that right? It's all right. Are you on? Yeah. Hey, Bolly. Hello? No, no. I mean, I mean, Nayara, Nayara. Black screen are you? to go the core point of uh, Ayurveda is the study of consciousness. 
also the, the future generations will be towards more of uh, towards the artificial intelligence but with ayurveda we don't need with ayurveda artificial in intelligence uh, may not be useful because we we concentrate more on the conscious level ayurveda has a greater role to play for the future generation is for sure global population of 21st century is witnessing various kinds of uh, lifestyle disorders these diseases are preventable or the world's biggest killers causing an uh, estimated 35 million deaths and uh, each year each year it's increasing ayurveda is the only answer for the lifestyle disorders oh, okay. these are different from other diseases because they are potentially preventable and yes. uh, can be lowered with uh, change in the diet that's why we have samadosha samadato samadnishya malakriya prasannat mindriya manah swasthe itya vidyate the first line is for the physical integrity and the second line is for the mental inter integrity so we in ayurveda we focus uh, both levels that's why world needs ayurveda for the future and uh, also many diseases according to our who fact sheets lifestyle disorders like cardiovascular diseases diabetes obesity cancer osteoporosis respiratory diseases gastrointestinal diseases account for 59 percent of uh, 56.5 million deaths annually and 45.9 percent of global burden of diseases changes in lifestyle and the increase of chronic diseases increased affluence and urbanization are also linked to lifestyle lifestyle for much of its history nutrition science has focused on the role of essential nutrients in preventing deficiencies however there is a need to ensure unaltered levels of key nutrients or functional components in the context of declining energy and expenditures lifestyle diseases also known as non communicate communicable diseases or conditions associated with the way people live and behave that's why the ayurveda has a greater role to play uh, 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 for the future generations or the reason for the ayurvedic students to study ayurveda unless address the mortality and the disease burden from these problems will continue to increase on possible consideration of this aspect who recognized the decade as the decade of lifestyle disorders since inception modern medical science depended upon synthetic and isolated extracts which are beneficial in breaking the pathology but are also known for certain shortcomings with the drug dependency developing adverse effects etc on the other fish facet of the coin the system failed to prevent effective treatment strategies you know effective treatment strategies uh, for many chronic diseases including the newly emerging lifestyle diseases hence the interest has been increased on alternatives from reliable resources uh, like that of ayurveda in due course of time an upsurge of interest in age old uh, medicines and therapeutic methods has been noticed who too recognized uh, the significance of traditional remedies in health care system encouraged and promoted them in national health care programs as they are comparatively safe and people have faith in such remedies here ayurveda can really support uh, in preventing the lifestyle disorder this is the major problem in the world uh, lifestyle issues if ayurveda can if the world can take ayurveda seriously and promote in their concerned countries i am pretty sure much of the diseases will come down number one economically also all the countries will become stable so in this point of view economically health wise the country budgets and everything ayurveda could play a major role for the future generations thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk on uh, 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 how does the ayurveda functions uh, supports for the future generations thank you very much namaste thank you thank you very much
Dr. Suresh Swanapuri ji. Thank you very much. You have really highlighted the necessity at present. Really great. Really great. I would like to welcome Tadjana Trasveska. Hope I am clear in pronunciation. I would like to request Dr. Shantalaji to welcome new speaker. <coughs> Sir, are you able to see? No. See the screen? No. Whenever we will see, we will communicate definitely. Don't worry. Sir, now? No. Black screen is visible. No, sir? No. What is happening? Here, and I will tell something about a very nice project. No, sir, not it. Here. And I will tell yes. us think about yes, a very yes. nice project. We have been launched this Great. Uh, University of Latvia in collaboration with Arya Vaidya Pharmacy from Coimbatore. So this study was an interdisciplinary project and it was about Ayurvedic polyherbal formulation, namely Jatayadi Thailand, and it showed a good antibacterial effect on resistant bacteria, and later on it showed also anti-inflammatory properties. So here, Ayurveda served as ancient Indian medicine with its knowledge on formulations and uh, herbal components action. And uh, we added biomedical sciences uh, and its tools, which can be used to check uh, the activity of components. So we combine medicine, biology, chemistry, and physics knowledge. So altogether, it was interdisciplinary collaboration, uh, which I would believe belong to Ayurvedic biology field. And the effective collaboration project was launched by University of Latvia, Faculty of Medicine, in collaboration with Ayurveda Pharmacy, uh, and uh, also Chikitsalayam and Research Institute, which is located in Coimbatore, India. And uh, it's... Um, with uh, AVP Baltics, Riga, Latvia. So we had representatives in India and representatives in Latvia. So who are these people? So first of all, from University of Latvia, we had uh, me, myself, Tatiana Trachevska, and then Professor Svaldis Pirax, Ilona Mandrika. Uh, she's expert in uh, molecular biology, then uh, Iveta Liduma, she's doctor in microbiology, uh, pharmacist, uh, Baiba Sanderson, uh, Professor Svaldis Pirox, he's a uh, head of University of Latvia Indic Studies Institute. And uh, from AVP, we had um, Dr. Somit Kumarchi, uh, he's also a head of uh, AVP Research Institute in Coimbatore now. 
we also had Dr. Cynthia Salsha. Uh, she's gastroenterologist, you know, and she has already also good expertise in Ayurveda as well. And Professor Salnard uh, Yesupov as a representative of Faculty of Medicine. And we had Kaspar Serglis from Physics mm. and many, many other people. Also, I should mention Sujit Enranizad from AVP Research Institute. So, and the study was launched in a very new academic center for natural sciences in Tornikans uh, district in Riga. So this is one of the first buildings started from 2015. And now we already have two buildings finished. Uh, and uh, this will be the World Academic um, Center. So we have House of Nature, we have House of Sciences, and the next will be House of Social um, Sciences. Uh, so it's a growing um, part of Riga, and uh, its uh, world infra infrastructure is uh, uh, established there. Yeah, so you could see also here the photo from Medical Microbiology Lab, where students are um, doing research. And uh, we also received uh, samples and uh, herbal fractions from uh, the AVP company and from the Avinash uh, Lingam University from Coimbatore. And uh, we have studied two uh, formulations of Jata Yadi Thailand. And Jata Yadi Thailand is generally used to treat non healing wounds burns, eczema, uh, so it is used as application. And uh, one of this usage is also a diabetic food infection, which is non-healing and which is caused usually by resistant bacteria, especially methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, uh, which would make about 46% uh, of infections in diabetic food in India. So, here you might see this uh, components and um, all of them were extracted and studied and also crude extracts were uh, received. So we showed the good anti-inflammatory properties and they showed good antibacterial efficacy, especially for gram-positive bacteria. Uh, and uh, this was shown in the publication which was uh, published in uh, Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine Journal in 2021. Uh, so you might find that. And there were many uh, conference presentations uh, related to this project. So for sure you could also find them. We are also very proud to have uh, the professor and Ayush chair in Latvia. Uh, Dr. Shantala Priyadarshini. Uh, she is expert in uh, Ayurveda and she is also teaching us and teaching students. And um, she is giving consultations in Ayurveda studio, Danvantari. So here you could see the photos of uh, our uh, center and our work. Uh, we also would wish to teach more students and people uh, who are medical professionals to give them basics and uh, also provide more knowledge on the clinical usage of Ayurvedic science. And it's interesting that we have already a book uh, which is uh, translated into Latvian. So this is the basics uh, in Ayurveda, the most uh, known Bhavhata. Uh, uh, Ashtanga Hridayam, which is translated uh, here in Latvia. Uh, the basics is translated. Mm, so it's um, already here in Latvia from 2070. And I could show the uh, editor's team. So these are people who were involved in this book translation. So first of all, I should mention uh, the editors, the main editors, Professor Svaldi Spirax, here on the right side, upper corner, and um, 
and Dr. Padma Shri Krishna Kumar from AVP Coimbatore, and then we had also people uh, who did the main technical work and editing, as uh, Dr. Cynthia Salsha, Dr. Sumit Kumar, Dr. Rita Pedan, and um, Dr. Paul uh, Dini, and Elisa Piraga and Elena Freya. So this book is there, and people have ready information to go on with. So once again, my heartly congratulations in Ayurveda Day. Let's everybody be healthy and happy. Thank you, Tatjana, madam. Thank you very much. And we are fortunate that Tatjana ji is available us, with us. So if Dr. Shantala will permit me, I would like to invite Tatjana ji physically come virtually. Tatjana ji, welcome. Oh, wow. Two words directly to the society. Please wait. Please wait, Shantala ji. Please wait. Is she there? Yes. Okay, okay. Please unmute Tatjana ji. Please unmute. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Your Hello, face everybody. is cut. Please focus camera on face. Yes, yes, now. Excellent. Great, madam. Welcome. Hello. Hello, everybody. Nice to be with you and have a great uh, Ayurveda day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. And please do join. We are conducting webinar almost all day. Three webinars, two webinars per day on different interesting topics. Please do join. And please propose your name as a speaker or on the topic of your choice. Santala ji is our commander, great commander of Ayo Samrati. Thank you. Santala ji. Sir, you are able to see see no. the speaker? No. I hope this is last speaker of the first session. No? Dr. Alrich work. <coughs> Sir, now you are able to see? No, madam. To this Ayurveda day, Especially I'm grateful to the University of Latvia in Riga and to Professor Vaidya Shantala Priyadeshin. Now, we are all living in difficult times. People talk a lot about climate change, but it is more than that. So you're sharing the screen? Of our environment, of our atmosphere. Sir, you are sharing the screen, so I am not able to yes, share, madam, share yes, the screen. Madam. Yes, madam, I am sharing the screen. So, if you put it off, then I can start my sure. video. Off, off. Please start.
So now you are able to see. Sir, uh, Can I share this video from my side? I have also typed sure. it. Yes, no, yes, yes. Yes, yes, madam. Yes, yes. Times. People Great. talk a lot about climate change, but it is more than that. It is overall pollution of our environment, of our atmosphere, the soil, and the water resources. All nature is out of balance, and all life on this planet is affected the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, as well as we humans. In order to bring nature back to harmony, it seems we have to go back to ancient wisdom of Vedas, especially of Ayurveda, this, uh, the science of life. Today, I want to share with you one method from Ayurveda, Agnihotra, a small fire performed in a copper pyramid of fixed size and shape in which some medicinal substances are burned and it's exactly, exactly the time of sunrise and sunset. Some Vedic mantras, except vibrations, are uttered, and some grains of rice to which little cow's ghee is applied are offered to the fire. This little fire nourishes the earth, soil to plants, air to water, all of humankind, and the animal and plant kingdoms. It is a subtle process, but be aware, the effects are not subtle now. They are profound. Agnihotra indeed is an extreme act of kindness towards all living beings, be they trees, animals, human beings, plants, air, and water. Let us look at the environment. First, the atmosphere. <clears throat> there are different types of atmospheric pollution. One is microbial pollution. This is much reduced by Agnihotra. You see here the petri dishes at the left side were taken before Agnihotra, and then at the right side, they were opened after Agnihotra, and you see uh, there's much less microbial pollution, and that leads to less infections. Now, particulate matter, uh, that is a serious concern. The World Health Organization uh, estimates that millions die annually due to air pollution, because of uh, this particular matter. And they say that it's the largest environmental health threat of the world. <clears throat> uh, and you can see here that with Agnihotra, microbial uh, uh, particulate matter is reduced as well as the microbial load. But not only that, um, even harmful chemicals are uh, neutralized, as we've seen in the Bhopal gas tragedy, where MIC gas, a very, very uh, poisonous gas, uh, toxic gas, um, was neutralized by performing a nota. Thousands and thousands of people died, but nobody in the families where they performed a nota had even, uh, were even slightly affected by it. Now, water resources. One simple tool is you take Agnihotra ash and add it to Agnihotra to water, and that reduces uh, uh, the harmful uh, microbes, for example, but also hardness, biological oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand, all parameters are improved. Um, and it's not only that, even the water quality of large water bottles uh, bodies improves, like we've seen with the Namada River next to Maheshwa, where we have a Homa place, and uh, the water quality parameters are much better in this Homa therapy place, where they perform Agnihotra regularly, uh, as compared to uh, the research stations upstream and downstream. About the soil, a Sanskrit text, uh, writ, a Sanskrit text written of around 1500 BC noted, upon this handful of soil, our survival depends. Husband it and it will grow our food, our fuel, and our shelter, and surround us with beauty. Abuse it and the soil will collapse and die, taking humanity with it. And now uh, already uh, one third of the world's soil has been degraded. And if we would continue like we do now, 
in the year 2050, we would only have one quarter of soil of the level in two, uh, 1960. So the soil has to be rejuvenated uh, by methods of homotherapy with Akinhotra, and this rejuvenated soil, uh, <clears throat> types of micro, all types of microorganisms, starting from viruses, bacteria, fungi, algae, and so on, thrive. Thus, a healthy microflora and microfauna is created. Um, for example, nitrogen fixing bacteria and phosphorus solubilizing bacteria multiply manifold. Uh, also, beneficial microbes increase and higher harmful microbes are controlled. The water holding capacity of the soil increases, and both alkaline soil and acidic soil come back to normal. And most important, in the context of climate change and greenhouse gases, the capacity of soil to store carbon in form of soil organic matter is increased manifold. On HOMA farms with regular Agnihotra, soil organic carbon content is more than 10 or even 15 percent. Uh, in this way, uh, the SO2 can be um, sequestered in the soil and uh, the CO2 content from in the atmosphere can be reduced again. So you see Agnihotra is an ancient tool which helps to heal our planet and simultaneously heals body, mind and soul. What is the modus operandi? Uh, it is said that prana and mind are directly connected. Any effect on prana immediately affects the mind and vice versa. And the flow of prana is controlled by the atmosphere. Now, Agnihotra purifies the atmosphere and therefore the flow of prana is harmonious again, which was uh, <clears throat> a problem because of all the pollution. So we have immediately an effect on the mind. And this we have seen in some studies I just mentioned one. Uh, you took EEG before Agnihotra. You see here uh, the <clears throat> most of the brain waves are in the beta range, uh, which means activity and also stress. And after Agnihotra, most of the brain waves are in the alpha range, which means relaxation, less stress. And less stress also means uh, the immune system gets stronger, and that's a good protection against all kinds of diseases. You see, Agnihotra is an ancient tool which helps our planet and also our body, and our mind, and our soul. Um, for more information, you can contact me, and now I wish you a nice conference. Thank you. And namaste. Thanks for your scientific communication regarding Agnihotra. Excellent, excellent, Dr. Aldrich. We would like to communicate our regards to you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to request Dr. Shantaraji for inviting next speaker. Our next speaker. Dr. Venkar Joshi. Yes, I am trying to put it, but it's not coming. Right. Which one is the video? In Croatia. Are you able to hear now? As a director of the association. Yes, of yes. You can hear yes. it. Yeah, Great. Yeah, we are talking about uh, the oh, interest. Yeah. Or and the growing demand of Ayurveda in UK, in my observations, over two decades, why and how Ayurveda has gained its popularity. And we know that Ayurveda is eternal. As a science being eternal, from the ages of time immemorial in history, the knowledge, the spices, the trade, Everything was existed and um, uh, thousands of years 
of our history by sea port into the Europe and we all know the evidences coming from those Neanderthal museum in Croatia and uh, the knowledge about the spices to the taste and food and recipes curry centers we all know as a food as a medicine based interest towards the natural um, healing taking place by the food as medicine where we are now more targeting onto the lifestyle medicine and we know that uh, our honorable prime minister modi ji as ever he became prime minister from 2014 onwards the interest has doubled uh, to the point of the yoga's recognition globally as a sister science ayurveda has also grown and now recently with the efforts of who into the global center for traditional medicine as a hub being established in jamnagar gujarat and the complementary integrative protocols of uh, developing evidence from the practice oriented evidences and uh, world health organization has put up understanding the traditions globally and incorporate the kind of standards in education to practice and uh, that's how we see the interest of uh, stakeholders uh, with the free trade from bharat india and the availability of these natural resources by entrepreneurs the enthusiast uh, ayurveda professionals being immigrated a lot into the west in recent past in my two decades and over observations in being in uk and europe and these are the interesting uh, aspects where national health service system uh, has also had uh, a significant uh, move forward for non invasive protocols of uh, healthcare management through lifestyle medicine yoga and as well as uh, many uh, non invasive protocols of therapeutic measures including massage treatments to shirodhara and that's how the food as medicine based also the interest among youngsters uh learning through the schools about their lifestyle medicine as a day to day based lifestyle according to ayurveda being uh, as a curriculum to be taught and many more with the projects from the aish ministry is also establishing over 40 plus countries um enriched with the memorandum of understandings so we are heading with this eighth international ayurveda day the prosperity and health and wellness for all with the establishment of wellness programs to the uh, health uh, uh, professionalism aish visas and so on so as a progressive collective um, evidences building up through this uh, interest growing for ayurveda into the rest of the world from bharat we wish in con- coming decades definitely ayurveda is going to be one of the best uh, integrative and um, um complementing uh, to the level of uh, uh, global awareness and health uh, preservation from the prevention to the health therapeutic restoration and health promotion so jai dhanvantari uh, with this efforts thanks dr um, for giving me this opportunity thank you one and all thank you thank you dr venkat joshi for sparing your valuable time and really i am grateful that you have you was physically present also in the event thank you thank you very much now i would like to request dr shantala ji for his concluding remarks her concluding remark shantala ji sir all the speakers has spoken very well and um... right from dr ish sharma to uh, dr joshi uh, i think uh, you should be speaking something about each person you can be giving conclusion uh, remarks that would be much agnivatri better agnivatri sir agnivatri sir for your concluding remarks thank you thank you so much in the meantime i will change the link as per sir as per sir, as per, sir um, 
Shantalaji made uh, good remarks and also walk over me to say something more. Otherwise, she has completed and covered all the addresses. So, uh, uh, in this session, this was our first scientific session and we have got a number of learned distinguished guest speakers starting from uh, Professor E. Sharma from Mauritius. And he really talked about the Ayurveda Pramyoho Anshangi Nam. But he stressed the focus over the lifestyle uh, disorders generated diseases. If we check the lifestyle in a proper manner, which has been uh, given in our text, we will be uh, keeping ourselves away from the diseases. Our next speaker was Dr. Uh, Somit Kumar, and he talked about that uh, uh, University of Latvia is uh, uh, having uh, good information regarding the uh, Ayurvedic development, and he also talked about the important, important factors regarding the uh, millets also, and uh, he really uh, took uh, something uh, that uh, well take reasons uh, development in uh, could be possible with the help of the Ayurvedic system. Our third next speaker was Dr. Suresh Sarnapuriji uh, from London, UK, and he emphasized over the change in diet and Ayurvedic study uh, is focusing over the consciousness. So it is very, very important. Uh, on one end, it's uh, the physical, uh, uh, talking about the physical health as well as the mental health uh, over the uh, point of uh, consciousness. Our Dr. Tanjana talked about the ancient Indian medicine and uh, as she had been ex-associate professor, faculty of Ayurved, she, she was uh, very much uh, uh, interested in Ayurved and she shown the scientific team which uh, led some scientific work there in Coimbatore in India. Uh, also, she informed that the Ashtanga uh, Hridayam to Sutistan is being translated in the Latvian language and it is very beneficial for the Latvian uh, uh, population and candidates interested for the Ayurveda. Our next man, Dr. Uh, Ulrich Burke, and he talked about the very important factor, which I am fond of it, that Agniyotta Karma. Really, Agniyotta has been introduced by so many places and in our rituals, in, in our Sanatan Dharma, uh, rather it is it is the offering of volitions to each and every day at the time of sunrising and sunset with some with the help of the mantra, which ultimately leads to the pollution-free atmosphere. It is um, found responsible to uh, to remove the pollution from water, from air, of, of course from soil also. And if it will take place, definitely the life in uh, uh, any country will be better and better. So Agniyot, uh, emphasis over Agniyot has been given by our Paraksar, and we are really thankful for him. And again, our Venkata Joshi sir, he is always very important person regarding the talk stocks over the Ayurveda. He physically talked over our previous uh, webinar as well as he talked about the lifestyle medicine. He talked about Ayurveda as a lifestyle medicine 